Welcome back everyone to another tutorial. Today I want to show you how to make the dash. In the last tutorial I made the double jump. As you can see I've added, the, I changed the particle effect a little bit. And today I will show you how to set up the dash easily. So I'm using the same scene as last time and I've got my player set up right here. Uh, it still has to move, it has a double jump and the direction of the player. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add two FSMs. And the first FSM will be dash direction. Oops, this is actually the state. Sorry about that. Just gonna put it there. And let's add one more FSM right away. And this will be the dash. To do the dash, we have to know in which direction the character is facing. And that's why I'm having this dash direction. And I'm going to start the first state by just pressing right because I'm starting the game facing right. And in this action, I'm going to set bool value. And I'm going to make a new variable, a new bool, which is called dash direction. And I'm going to check the bool value and then I'm already making a finished and I'm going to make a new state by the way if you press control and drag a transition you make a state I just learned this now <laughs> a little bit late to the game and this state I'm going to call set bool and I want to have two events here which is right and left and i'm just going to add the transitions right and left and within the fsm whoops within the state sorry i'm going to add a couple actions i'm going to get get key down and i know this is kind of not very sophisticated but it works very well, depending on your setup, of course. And the key will be for right, it will be the D key. Of course, if you use other keys to move to your right, then you should find the right input. And then I go to the right. I'm just gonna copy this. I'm gonna go to the left for this one. And the left key will be the A key. Not the alpha, guys. The a key there we go and let's first do the right new state and this will be the I'm just going to call this state right dash direction and in this one i'm going to set bool set bool value of the dash direction to right same like this one I'm not gonna push every um, every frame. Finish, and I'm just gonna go back to the set bool because I always want him to check if I'm either pressing an A or a D in my direction. All right, I'm just gonna copy it down. Whoops, not this one. Here, drag it here, and let's call this one left direction. Let's make it clean. And the left we drag here. And of course, let's make sure that the bool value here is unmarked. And this way, we will always have a bool which shows us if we're actually facing right or left. Let's go to the dash. So within dash, I'm going to start out with getting the input. Get input. And this can be, again, any key. I will just make a button or a key get key down and for this one I'm gonna get the shift um, this is gonna be the left left shift because it's next to the a a and D for moving and space I'm just gonna take the shift but you can take anything you like and then I'm just gonna add the transition of let's make an event Head transition. Hmm. 
let's make an event here which is called check bool. I also want to have an event which is called dash write dash whoops and dash left and that's about it and here I'm going to add the transition to check the bool. I'm going to make a new state here call it check bool because I first want to know am I looking right or am I looking left and I'm going to do this by get fsm fsm bool fsm bool and I can just use the owner and the fsn name is dash direction the variable name is dash direction I'm going to store the value in you guessed it dash direction and now it's false and I don't have to push here every frame I just want to check it once and then I'm gonna do a bool test so a bool test will um, enable you to make an event based on the bool value and the bool variable is test direction again which I just made which is a new variable here this direction which saved the desk direction from the dash direction FSM into the desk direction. A lot of dash direction. And if the bool is true, then I'm gonna go dash right. And if the bool is false, I will dash left. And that I'm gonna make, of course, the two transitions, dash right and dash left. And now I will set up the right dash first. Just gonna also pull it to the right. And this one I will call dash right. Right, within the dash right, I'm gonna use the add force 2D function. And the add force 2D is quite tricky. I had to um, play around with it for quite some while to get it correct, but I uh, use actually thousand and you start with much lower because the walking speed is always like speed is like what six or three or five and I needed a very high value here and I needed it every frame. If somebody knows a better solution, please let me know. This works for me every frame. And what I also want to do is and this depends on me, I want to set animator, animator trigger, and I'm just gonna use the same trigger as the, um, as the jump, here's the sprite, and the trigger jump, there. And if I want to, let's say, spawn a particle effect around myself, I would make, and this is optional, guys, the set trigger jump is optional, and also this create, whoops, create object advanced is optional. And I'm going to use the prefab, which I made somewhere, as usual. It's, uh, it's here. Particle effects. Please lock here. And I'm using the super dash effect. It sounds really amazing. Um, and I'm just going to use the parent. And I'm just going to specify game object. I'm just going to press here. Let's just use the sprite here. The parent, I just want the particles to stay with the character. You can also make a particle effect perhaps behind it or something, or spawn it at one space and then move out. But this is up to you again. What I did, which I forgot to mention at the beginning, uh, in the last tutorial, I had a particle spawner for the jump, which is at the feet. And I made an additional particle spawner dash, which I put in the middle of the character. And that's where the spawn point is, the particle spawner dash spawn point. There we go. And what I want to do here is add a weight, a weight of 0 0.2. And then I'm finished. That's the weight. I'm finished. For the dash left, I'm just going to copy this state over. I'm going to connect dash left, uh, name it dash left. 
and here I'm gonna do minus 1000 every frame <clears throat> also spawn again the particle effect set the trigger wait 0 0.2 seconds and then I'm going to a new state and this state will be cooldown and this is of course up to you how much cooldown would you like to have in your game or not but here it's just a simple wait and let's do two seconds finished at transition finished and we're going back and finally not to forget i forgot to select here the transition of course always make sure that all the transitions are working and now it should actually work so let's maximize on play let's start play and jumping twice dash boom boom of course if i want to make the dash longer i can just change this waiting time within the player so if i go to the player and i would say instead of 0 0.2 0 0.3 and perhaps change the speed a little bit to 800 I can play around with this. Now also the dash is a little bit slower and a little bit longer. But there you have it. There is a dash function. I hope it's useful for you. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and see you in the next tutorial. Cheers.